Muy buenos días, misionero Miguel Hermúdez Marín, allá en Feviva, Valencia, Venezuela. Good morning, misionary Miguel Bermúdez Marín, there in Feviva, Valencia, Venezuela, and also to all the ministers gathered there, our brother Jesús Barrolleta and Eftali Díaz, and all those who are gathered on this occasion, Williams Romero, and everyone, Miguel Chavez, pastor there of Feviva, and all those who are there today, June 28th of this year, 2023, and also there in the north of Peru, in Chimbote, our brother Toribio there, who has also a meeting with all the ministers of that region and also in Mexico and all the places where you are gathered today. It tells us in Hebrews in chapter 12 Verses 25 onwards, see that ye not refuse him that speaketh, for if they escaped not who refused him that spoke on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word yet once more signifies the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have rays whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. You may please sit down, those who are standing. He tells us in the message the parable of the faithful and wise steward which was preached on May 26 of 2005 in Ecuador. Our brother William tells us there Just like God gave authority to Jesus Christ when he ascended to heaven, he gave him authority over the whole universe, over the creation. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and as vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my Father. See, as Christ received it from heaven, he received authority and power over all creation. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth, said Christ in Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 and on. And therefore, what Christ will do with the faithful and wise steward runs parallel to what the Father did with Jesus Christ. Everything will be parallel. Therefore, the faithful and wise steward we have already seen that it is the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is, which has been in the midst of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ all the time and has been faithful and has been wise 
and in the last day he will be in human flesh in the midst of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and in him and through him the Holy Spirit will be manifest in the ministries of the two olive trees of Moses and Elijah and will be making the separation between the right and wrong he will separate he will make a separation now we stop here for a moment and there we see how he identifies that faithful and wise steward which is the angel the angel of the Lord has been all the time in the midst of his church as he was in the Old Testament called the angel of the covenant in the midst of the Hebrew people and then became flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. But he was in every age and in every dispensation veiled and revealed through every messenger. The angel of the Lord Jesus Christ, notice, from age to age, has been in every messenger in a portion and there is the promise that he would become flesh and that he would be doing a work in this end time. He would be operating the ministries of Moses and Elijah and he would be bringing a separation between the right and the wrong. Now, see how that scripture from Revelation 22.16 and Revelation 22.16, notice how it has multiple fulfillments as well. We know that the scriptures have one, two, three, even five fulfillments. In other words, they have multiple fulfillments. And remember that there, John, on two occasions, was trying to worship that angel. Now notice something very important here. The angel forbade him and that work that the angel of the Lord will be doing because the work that God does in every age and in every dispensation is always done through a veil of flesh. And the work that he has been carrying out in his messenger and doesn't finish it. In other words, he doesn't fulfill something which that messenger spoke, which is inspired through the Holy Spirit working in him and doesn't fulfill that work that has been spoken by, a, by the mouth of that prophet, then... God sends another prophet and through that other prophet the angel of the Lord works because it is Christ the Holy Spirit which operates the ministries and he then carries out what wasn't fulfilled by that messenger who spoke of that prophecy notice he didn't fulfill the prophecy of the coming of the Messiah in David, even David saying that they pierced my hands and my feet, and that happened many years later. Now in this in time, we have read that the Holy Spirit will be manifest in the ministries of the two olive trees, the ministries of Moses and Elijah, and will be making that separation. Now, Notice that in the ministry of Reverend William Branham, there wasn't that separation, that segregation. In the ministry of our dear brother William Soto Santiago, there wasn't a, that segregation, that separation either. And now, look, in this message, hearing, recognizing, acting on the Word of God, 
Our brother Branham tells us on page 6, on page six he says, It happened the same thing in Israel and Moab. Two great churches coming together and when Israel was wanting to go to their promised place, church spiritual, Jacob's people, Israel, on the road, Esau's people met them, Moab, a church powerful, and the great leader of the church, Balaam, came down to curse his brother, but he found that he could not curse his brother. He failed with the blindness of his eyes to see the predestined plan that, and to see the word of God. First, faith comes by hearing hearing of the word of God, then the believers hears it, recognized it, and acts on it. The carnal man will hear it, the sound of it, but never. Hear means to understand it. Look at is looking at something, but to see it is to understand it. Except a man be born again, he cannot see or understand the kingdom of God. Further on, he goes on to say, how blind, how blind of Esau's children, spiritually speaking, the Moabites looked down upon Israel and said, look at them, they're not a denomination, they're a bunch of renegades. They live in tents, and we're a great nation. They done evil, and they have no organization among them. They are just wiggling around, following a prophet. But he failed to see the brass serpent and the smitten rock going before them. He failed to see that called out elect group following the divine order of God to the promised land. That's the way it is today, they say. It's a bunch of holy rollers. It's a bunch of people who's this, that, or the other, but they fail to see that it's following the direction of the word of God. Further on, and today... You will never, no matter how much law they get, how much prosecution, how much persecution, how many evil things they say, how many times they call Holy Roller, how many times they say those evil things, the church will move on. It's got to. It's staying in the Word of God. One time, two kings together, one of them was Ahab, a bad one. The other one was Josephat, spiritual church and church carnal. Ahab was a borderline believer. He had prophets. They wasn't infidels. They wasn't idolers. They were Israelites, prophets, but they were all taught and fed and clothed by Ahab, the king. It become like a place where they had all the political backing up. Josephat came in, coming down, made an alliance, which is wrong. You should never hook up with unbelievers. We should never, by no means, ever put our names on books in churches that does not believe the full gospel. Never. You'll get in trouble. And they got in trouble. And this righteous man said, Should not we consult the Lord first and find out whether we should go to Ramoth Gilead? Now, look how perfect the setup looked. We own Ramoth Gilead. It's our property. 
and the Syrians has took it from the living God shall we not go up and possess this land and he made this speech so pretty and so legal and so righteous until Jehoshaphat fell for it and today Men can stand in the pulpit with such intellectual and speech making and education until they can explain the power of the Holy Spirit away from the Bible. They can explain divine healing away. They can explain speaking in tongues and interpretation. They can explain the baptism of the Holy Ghost to another day. Notice. And this is talking about ministers who stand in the pulpit. Those who are not in line with what God is doing. And they see the promise being fulfilled and they say, no, that already happened. Or they say, no, that's for later. That's not now. Notice, they start explaining and what they are doing is taking away the power of the Holy Spirit through that explanation. That is what our brother Branham is speaking to us there. And they begin to say, as we read from our brother William recently, no, that prophecy has already been fulfilled and that is history. And there he shows us that the scriptures have many fulfillments and that scripture may be being fulfilled at that moment. God will be fulfilling that promise and a minister comes and stands in the pulpit and makes explanations. In other words, he takes away the power of that prophecy, of that promise to the people. Our brother Branham goes on to say here, but a man that's elected from God, a man, my sheep know my voice. You've got that election of God upon you. It'll never stumble you. Notice. He goes on to say, Jehoshaphat said, the righteous king, isn't there a prophet that we could consult the Lord? Ahab was going on without it. That's the way the church carnal is doing today. Oh, they got seminars full of preachers, great men, great professors, intellectuals, smart, witty. Oh my, far beyond the wits of the church, of the church spiritual. He goes on to say a little further on. I am I am speaking a little so I don't have to read everything. Later you can read it. Further on it says, Now, so Jehoshaphat said, Isn't there a prophet? Oh, of course, the carnal has the... Certainly, we have. I've got a seminary down here full of them, brought up 400 now. These are not infidels. They are Jehovah's God worshippers. Come up and they said, let us have a little while and we will prophesy. And so they all got together and they come back with the word of the Lord and they said, thus saith the Lord. Israelites, prophets, Thus said the Lord, go on up, and the Lord is with you, and you will take Ramoth of Gilead, because it really belongs to Israel, and one of the headmen made him two great big horns out of iron as representative, and he went to pushing, he said, with this, 
you will push Israel or push, push the Syrians plumb out of Ramoth Gilead. But Jehoshaphat, something in him. Now, let's look here so that you have the scripture there that is in First Kings. From chapter 1, there is all that scripture, all that portion that Brother Branham is quoting there. Brother Branham goes on to say, Oh, I hope that God gets this to your heart. It's nothing you can educate yourself to. It's nothing you can read yourself into. It's what God by election does for you, not him that runneth or him that show. It's God that showeth mercy. Jehoshaphat said, they are fine dressed men. No doubt he said something like this, though of those 400 men. They are intelligent and the smartest men I've ever heard. They are educated to the moment. Their stand is one accord. They have a great unity among them and they are smart and they have a lot of truth to them. All errors has truth. The biggest lie was ever told had 90, 99 because there is a blank spot a percent of truth in it the lie that satan told eve oh it's a lot of truth in what they are saying but is in there one more says jehoshaphat but is in there one more well what do you think that man said when we've got 400 here of the smarters the best they are not out here in the wilderness running around half naked and sheepskin wrapped around them or something. They are men that I have fed, I've educated. They are not men that don't know their ABCs. They are scholars and they know the thing. They stay day and night reading the scrolls and prophecy and they know what's right. I have them ready, and they are standing here with one accord, 400 of them, saying, Go on up, the Lord is with you. But if you could read Jehoshaphat's mind for a few minutes, there's just something that doesn't register. He would say, there is just something that doesn't seem right. Isn't there just one more somewhere? Oh, he said, yes. There is one more, but he doesn't uh, belong to the organization. He's a different sort of fellow. He's just a renegade. He is like Jacob, but we might ask him. They say he's a prophet, but I doubt it because he's always cursing me, saying that this, that, or the other or he never prophesizes good about me. How could he? See? So they said, notice, when Brother Branham, there we read that this is how they talked about Jesus. How did he come to destroy churches? How could this be the Messiah? And look here, they always have that concept of the one sent by God, that they are some renegades, that they are, that what they do is to condemn and speak bad, but they don't see the part and the work for which God has sent them, that the presence of a prophet always brings blessing, but also brings divine judgment. And those who are going to receive the divine judgment, well, they will find all the faults and will point him as a renegade, as one who condemns and that doesn't speak well of that kind of people who don't receive and are not believing the work that God is carrying out. But the one who receives him, the one who will receive the blessings, well, doesn't look at the veil of flesh, but rather looks at the work that this veil of flesh, that prophet, came to do. 
and came to fulfill in the midst of the people, and thus he receives the blessings. So they say, let's go get him. His the son of Imla. So they went and got him, and somebody met him on the road and said, Now, you say the same thing they say. You must agree. You must agree with the association. If you don't, woe unto you. He said, I will say just what God puts in my mouth to say and nothing else. Because a prophet of God is not there to please anyone. He speaks what the Holy Spirit tells him to speak, whether people like it or not. Then, after he got up there and they gave him a night, he said, Go on up, but I've seen Israel scattered like sheep having no shepherd. And Ahab said, Didn't I tell you? Now, there's 400 against one, 400 trained, smart, educated, intellectual men against one little ignoramus, as we would call him, Micaiah, one man. But yet that man had the word of the Lord that made the difference. Every one of them was false. It proved out false. Why was Micaiah so different? Did he have to be poor to be different? No. What made Micaiah different is he stayed with the Word. The Word of God is what he stayed with. Now, it's promised that in these days God will pour out His Spirit It's promised by Daniel that the people in these days, when the stone hits the image in the foot, the people that know their God shall do exploits. Prophecy after prophecy and all the seminaries, the world can take it out. God going to do it anyhow, and people is going to follow it. In other words, there are people that are going to follow him, you see? The carnal and uh, the natural church and the supernatural church, you see? The word makes the difference that what Jacob thought, and no matter what, I know I can never be blessed unless I get a hold of that birthright. That birthright is what I'm going to have to get a hold of. And there... He's already talking about the case of Jacob and Esau, and, but Esau hated it, and his children does the same thing, yet to this day, they hate it. It's always been. Whenever there is a revival, it always produces twins. That's a rude remark, but it's true. When there was a birth out of from Isaac and Rebekah, it produced twins. When the world was created, it produced twins, two trees. And when Cain and Abel were born, it produced two. When Ishmael and Isaac was born, it produced two. And when Esau and Jacob was born, it produced two. One, one of them natural, one of them of the earth, the other one supernatural. And one looked at the natural intellectual, the other one walked by the Spirit, and it's always been that way. And remember, when Jesus came, Judas also came. And in this end time, it says that at the same time that the devil falls from heaven and it's incarnate in a man, the Holy Spirit goes up and comes incarnate in a man. In other words, the devil will also be incarnated in a man, which is the Pope in Rome. He goes on to say a little further on, but that spiritual seed of the living God, though it has to be a sojourner, 
Though it has to be a rambler, it always causes separation. Esau didn't last very long with Jacob. As soon as Jacob obtained the birthright, praise God, it called for a separation. Notice when he obtained that birthright, there was a separation. And that is something very important and very significant because there we are seeing when that separation takes place. Now, who is the one that is going to make that separation? Which are the ministries that will be operating to make that separation? Now, notice. We are going to go a little bit further. We continue right there. It called for a separation. And when a man, I don't care what church you belong to, if it's carnal and your associates that you run with, the people you play cards with and your literal societies and so forth, when you obtain the birthright, that's something that's down in your heart, that's hungered for God. When you receive that, it calls for a separation. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith God, separation. Now, we continue reading here in this message, the parable of the faithful and wise steward, what it goes on to say here. It says, with what? That is because we read that he will be making the separation between the right and the wrong. He will separate. He will make a separation with what? With his message, with his word. And he will separate the wheat from the tares. And he will separate the wise virgins from the foolish virgins. He is coming to carry out the great harvest of the last day. And nobody can do that, says Reverend William Branham. Nobody can do that. But who? The angel of the Lord. Notice it is the work of the angel of the Lord. But he uses an instrument in whom he veils himself reveals himself and operates those ministries to do that work which wasn't carried out in past times brother william continues saying this is in the message the seed of discrepancy preached by reverend william branham it says he could not depend on some certain church to separate them that is he could not trust in the church to make the separation of the wheat and the tares say the methodist or baptist or the pentecostals to separate them he said he sends his angels to separate them an angel is coming to bring the separation the segregation between the right and the wrong and no one can do that but the angel of the lord he is the one that is going to tell which is right and which is wrong god said he will send his angels in the last times not angels down through here that is they will not be angels throughout the seven ages but angels at the last time and would gather together we know that this is the coming harvest time now now an angel is actually interpreted as a messenger and we see that there is seven angels of the seven churches and now no through the church ages do you see the separation it is after the church ages the separation is in the stage of the age of the cornerstone therefore this is the most glorious time of all times for which the promise is that there will be the angel that will make that separation the angel of the lord jesus christ look how the scriptures have their multiple fulfillments and notice how that part when he says the angel of the lord jesus christ who will be doing certain things but we see that in that instrument he didn't fulfill them well the angel of the lord jesus christ has to do them in the other veil of flesh that god has already predestined preordained from before the foundation of the world to carry out that work and we are seeing one of those tasks which is the separation the segregation between the right from the wrong
Ahora, now, sigue diciendo aquí nuestro our brother Abraham, Branham goes on to say here, ¿y dónde es que ocurre eso? and Dice, where does that happen? He says, after the church ages, that is, after the dispensation of grace, in that stage of the age of the cornerstone of the dispensation of the kingdom. Now, it goes on to say here, the church settles down. See, I am continuing here on page 11 from the message hearing recognizing acting on the word of god the church settles down see it cannot go on iso was a very good type of the carnal believer today never able to overcome the world he don't overcome the things of the world they still like their carousing their dancing their manicure makeups and the women on their faces and cutting their hair and wearing these little short clothes and men likes to go to the pool rooms and smoke cigarettes and tell little dirty jokes and still belong to the church now see it says to him that overcometh and in the book of the seals he says overcome the things of the world if you look for it on page i think 115 of the book of the seals let's see if it's 115 here the, the 137 in the book in english it says we all know as christians that god swore to david that he would rise up christ to sit on his throne and give him an everlasting kingdom here on earth he did it, and Jesus said, He that overcomes the Antichrist and all the things from the world shall sit with me in my throne as I have overcome and have sit down on my Father's throne. See, now someday he rises from the Father's throne and goes to take his own throne. Now he comes forth to call his subjects. How is he going to claim them? He's already got the book of redemption in his hand notice because when he rises from the throne of intercession he takes the title deed opens it in heaven and brings it open and hands it to a man to eat it therefore he can make that claim because he has the names of those that he is going to claim that he is going to claim because those that he is going to claim were the ones he redeemed with his precious blood our brother branham goes on to say here they are never able to overcome those things neither could iso but yet to be religious he had to settle down to an intellectual conception that's the same thing the church does today will become an organization we will put ourselves together we will make a clan or a clique or something like that and that's the way the church moves today the spiritual and the carnal still the same it hasn't changed and never will change now notice that day that carnal church what does it do it says we will make a clan in other words notice and that in the message christ is the, is the mystery of god revealed and that he spoke some words there that were later placed as words to the bride where in that message those were placed in some bookmarks notice notice what our brother william told us there in the message a greetings to ministers in 2011 in january 8 2011 and that little piece we place it there in the bookmark it says we have to be prepared keeping ourselves well united in divine love always remembering the words of reverend william branham words to the bride having them as a bookmark in our bibles and also in our pockets to always read them 
so that we are prepared to always keep ourselves steadfast in the divine program because as in all times there were spiritual struggles there are and there will be in our time too and there our brother William Branham tells us from that message Christ is the mystery of God revealed love one another above everything love one another another don't no matter what the devil tries to say now you're all one great big sweet group now but remember my warning see satan won't let that stay uh, that away no sir he he will shoot everything if he has to bring somebody in to make uh, his target he'll bring some critic or unbeliever in and sit him down and cause and cause him to uh, fellowship with you under the quietness and things and then he'll shoot that guy with some kind of poison stuff and he'll start uh, through the church with it don't don't you take sides with it don't you have nothing to do with anything else you stay right loving and sweet and kind to one another pray for that man that he'll be saved too or that woman or whoever it is just pray for them and stick one with another and stay with your pastor so he is the shepherd and you give him respect he'll lead you through and because he's ordained of god to do so now you remember that The enemy will come, and when he does, just cling that much closer together, and the one that the devil is using for an enemy will either get out or come in and be one of you. That's all. Don't never among one or talk make yourself clannish. Look, who is the one that does that? The carnal church notice they lean to make a clan but to attack and harm the work of God brother Branham was already saying it we are one I couldn't say left hand I'm mad at you I'm going to take you away because you're not the right hand he's my left hand and I want him to stay there even the little tip of my finger I want to stay right there every little part of my body stay right there and God wants us as a body of believer to stay right exactly with one another right at with one another and he continues there reading in other words of brother Branham saying that you can continue reading it later on notice on page 571 from the book in English also brother Branham in the prayer that he made there finishing the seventh seal he tells us in that prayer Lord I pray that you keep sickness away from us may it come to pass that when people become sick that they will remember the present and all sufficient blood of the Lord Jesus lays on the altar to make the atonement now remember that already here at this moment he is speaking in that time in that year when he was still on the throne of intercession and he had said in the first seal and in the bridge the bridge first seal second seal around there as well where he was talking about when the lamb would rise from the throne and he at that moment was talking like that was happening and he then says but remember this is on the future now he is speaking here in this way but already when he is saying it there he is still there in the throne of intercession but today he is no longer as intercessor so the mercy of God 
en su iglesia, is in his church, en su in his spiritual en temple, in the most holy place, in the place where he descended. Now, he goes on to say, and I pray that they'll be healed immediately, and I pray that you keep the power of Satan away from them to discourage them or to try to make them cults. See? And there he also spoke about it. Or just keep all the powers of the enemy away. Lord, sanctify us to thy word. Grant it, Lord. Then, Lord, I pray that you will help me. I am beginning to fade away. Lord, I know my days can't be too many more. And I pray that you help me to let me be true, Lord, and honest and sincere that I might be able to bear this message as far as it's ordained for me to bear. Notice, until a certain place, that is, until his days are over, he is ordained to carry the word, the sword, to that messenger that God has been using. And when it is time to leave, he is already aware that another one would come for which he would have to pass that sword because he goes on to say, And when it comes to the time that I must lay down and I get down to the river and the waves begin to come in, oh God, may I be able to hand this old sword over to somebody else that will be honest with it, Lord, and will pack the truth. Now, let's continue reading here in the message we are reading. It goes on to say further on on page 13. And then we see another separation that was Abraham and Lot. They were brethren, but Lot was a carnal thinker. He was always out for something big, something with a lot of tinsel on it, just like a monkey, as I'd say, always reaching for bright things. That spirit hasn't left people today. They will reach for the... They go to the city and they wouldn't come to a little shack like this. See, they want the biggest church that is in the city and the most intellectual pastor where the best dressed people goes, where the mayor goes to the city. It's still that Esau spirit really had the birthright to begin with, call themselves the church, but they lose it because they despise it. You can't get them people to get down on their knees and cry and beg out to God and go out and have healing services and stand the persecution of the world. Receive the, the Holy Ghost. And they won't do that. They despise it. They call it a bunch of holy rollers. Just the Bible said they would do that. They do it because that's their nature. It's their nature. Like the crow and the dove, the two natures. They crave it because that is what they are. They will never, never see the other because they're not born to see that. Remember, as long as they were associated together, the church natural and the church spiritual, they never did get the blessing. Jacob was never blessed until he separated himself from Esau, and Abraham was never blessed until he separated himself from Lot. Lot has its own little prayers meeting in his church down there taught his sons and daughters and them but he lived such a life till when he went to talking about the end of the time they laughed at him the same thing today you talk about divine healing and the power of god and so forth they laugh at it notice We are speaking that there will come a mighty manifestation of the power of God in the fulfillment of the tenth vision where those signs and wonders were seen. And we are speaking where people are being healed. And we are also speaking of that spiritual healing and that change that the word, the message is doing in every believer, which are greater miracles than a physical healing and they say that is fanatism those are holy rollers 
Those are hallelujahs. Notice, and they laugh and mock what God is doing. He goes on to say, it is the same spirit. That's the two great spirits religiously has got the world in grip the believer and the unbeliever, the believer and the make-believer, the one impersonating the other one. Now, when Abraham separated himself, did you notice in Jesus speaking of the coming, second coming, he said, as it was in the days of Noah, they be eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage, but when he spoke of the days of Lot, he never said nothing about it as the days of Lot. That's for revelation. Now, notice, in the days of Lot, who was in the days of Lot? Elohim, with his archangels, Gabriel and Michael. In other words, it will be by revelation that you would be seeing the fulfillment of the coming of the Son of Man with his angels. Whoever doesn't see it is because he will not have the revelation, he will not have the prophetic insight to comprehend and understand that mystery being fulfilled in this time in the midst of his church. In other words, it is the mystery of the coming of the Son of Man with his angels, which has to be by revelation to understand it. Flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, see? But my Father which is in heaven, see? That this revelation comes from heaven. It can't be a revelation of man, made by man. Jesus said to Peter when he told him, Flesh and blood hath not revealed it to thee. Notice that after God gave Peter the revelation of who Jesus was, there came a change of name. It goes on to say, further on, here in this same message, it tells us, on page 18, I go to page 18 at the bottom, it says, see where we are at? Jesus said, be careful. See how Judas was? He was right there with them. He was the Esau made greater for this age. He was the deceiver. The impersonator made it greater for this age. Here he come right up to, again, a brother of Jesus, a pretended brother. But in his heart, he was with the old carnal church all the time. Because that's where he sold Jesus to. He sold Jesus, his birthright, just as much as Esau did for a mess of pottage. He sold his birthright for 30 pieces of silver. Many a man and women today had sold out their spiritual birthright for some popularity. Some little thing of the world you never overcome. Some little woman uh, wearing of makeup and a bobbing of hair, wearing shorts, clothes, men for little ditty jokes and smoking cigarettes, something of the world. If you love the world or the things of the world, the love of God is not in you, said the Bible. I don't want to hurt you, but we are up to the end. We are coming up now. We are coming up the ladder quickly now. Notice, because above, which is the top, which is the pyramid, where today is the full fulfillment of that final part of the top of that pyramid, which is the age of the cornerstone. 
¿Ven cómo es? See how it is? They do it. They are predestined. They might impersonate and be just as sweet and humble, just as close like Christians, so close that would deceive even the very elect. But by their fruits, you shall know them. A woman with shorts on never looked like a Christian to me. The Bible said it is a sinful and shameful thing for a woman to cut her hair. Only one woman in the Bible ever painted her face was Jezebel. How about men? You men that's supposed to be Christian men and let your wives do that? When God will hold you responsible for it, not men, carnal. Oh, I'll go out then and join this church. You think about it. That's just exactly what the scripture said they would do. And that's just exactly what they done. And that's what they will do. Compromise. Someone said, Billy, if you don't stop that, you'll run everybody away. In other words, everyone is going to leave the church. Which we have already seen how they have been living. But look, there is one who doesn't live. Look what Brother Branham says. There is one thing that won't go, the Holy Spirit, because it is His Word. And the real predestined believer won't go away because it is food for his soul. He loves it. Nothing can keep him away from it. He will do anything like Jacob, but he wants that birthright. He'll stand there. I don't care if it costs every friend his God, if it costs his job, if it costs his church membership, if it costs everything, he will still hold to it because he can't help it. There is something in him moving him, the deep calling to the deep. Oh, there you are, something in him. Like many who prefer not to say openly that they are in favor or that they are on one side or the other because it would affect their uh, level in society or their level in the groups and prefer to keep quiet and say nothing. And that is the carnal, that is the manufactured one, that is the one that always goes all the way to the end, but he will reach a point where he can no longer resist, let's say, that pressure at the top, because the eagle ascends to a place where no other bird can ascend. In other words, there will come a time when it will burst, But God's elect, the child of God who comes seeking God's blessing, will remain there listening to the voice of God because what he desires is the blessing, which is the one that contains that rapturing faith. And he will not care if they don't talk to him or if he loses friends, or if they do other things with that person, they laugh at him, they make fun of him, and whatever else, he will remain in the Word because he is a child of God, predestined from before the foundation of the world to receive the blessings. And he will be overcoming all the things of the world, everything, not living one thing out there, but he will overcome all things. But we know that there is a process. We know that some overnight, but others take Uh, more time. Therefore, God is helping them and He is helping us to continue serving the Lord and fixing everything we have to fix.
because he comes for his church and his church is in this time in this stage of preparation now look on page 108 in this one it is the 108 let's see which is the one in the in the book of the ages the edited one so that you have uh, the same one that I'm going to read here will be from 108 to 109 he tells us and now to these sons of God who by him overcome are given the privilege of the paradise of God and the constant fellowship of Jesus Christ, there will never be any separation from him. Whither he goes, his bride will go, 